will we all die of hunger if we don't use genome editing? No, of course we won't. But if we don't use this, there are things that we have to give up. Climate change forces plant populations to adapt to changes in temperature and rainfall. For three decades, 2020 Novozymes Prize recipient Detlef Feigl has studied what causes plants to bloom and how the future climate will affect their survival. The answers that we got were really quite um, surprising. So we know that it's uh, you know, going to become even drier around the Mediterranean. You might think you know, these Mediterranean populations are the ones that are most at risk. But it turns out that most at risk are the populations in Central Europe because these uh, plants basically have no genetic toolkit to, to deal with extended uh, a drought. Detlef Feigl's fascination with science started far from genetics and climate change on birdwatching trips with his father. But it wasn't the birds that fascinated him. The birds, they're normally far away, and uh, the butterflies or, or dragonflies, I you know, would go with my net and uh, catch them to look at them closely. Detlef wanted to study biology, but traditional biology was not his cup of tea. To be honest, I was a little bit put off by, you know, eco and natural, and then I thought, nah, maybe molecular biology and molecular genetics is more what, you know, fits. Detlef studied at the University of Cologne, working with fruit flies under a leading figure, Jose Antonio Campos Ortega. One day, Detlef Feigl picked up a copy of Science magazine. On the cover was a four-winged Drosophila fruit fly resembling a dragonfly. Inside, Edward B. Lewis and colleagues described the first genomic analysis of this mutant fly. This was a pivotal moment in Detlef's career. And I thought, uh, what a phenomenal time to be alive. I study biology and uh, I can go to the library, pick up this issue of Science magazine, read it, understand it. As much joy as I get from discoveries that my team makes, I derive at least as much joy from what happens uh, all around me. His fascination with his colleagues' findings drove him towards new fields of science. I was working as a graduate student very closely with uh, a good colleague and friend of mine, Gerhard Jürgens, and he had just learned about this plant, Aerodopsis thayana, that had many attributes. Uh, similar to Drosophila, and he sort of turned me on. Detlef Feigl moved to the United States. Soon, he and his colleagues discovered a master control gene in Arabidopsis thaliana. The first major finding from his lab was that an Arabidopsis gene could dramatically accelerate the flowering of trees. But that was just the beginning of a flurry of first-class accomplishments. This has established Arabidopsis thaliana as a prime model system in plant biology and beyond. A meeting with a visiting postdoc, Ove Nilsson, from Sweden, led to a breakthrough. As we were sitting over lunch and looking out on the ocean, he said, well, I know how to transform these poplar trees. Uh, why don't we just put this gene into trees? And I think we both agreed that this was an extremely long shot. Maybe trees were just too different from Arabidopsis. And then all of a sudden he writes to me and sends these pictures and says, you will not believe what happened. I took your leafy gene, I put it into my uh, little uh, trees here, and uh, within weeks in my Petri dish, I saw flowers, and normally it would take years. Detlef Feigl moved back to Germany in 2002 and became director at the Max Planck Institute for Developmental Biology in Tübingen, the town where nuclein, later known as DNA, was first discovered. Detlef Feigl's work on flowering made him wonder are there invisible differences between plants depending on where they grow? In Spain, for example, Arabidopsis plants typically flower January, February or so. 
wouldn't be a good idea if you, you know, try to start flowering in January or February if you are, you know, up in uh, northern Sweden. Detlef Feigl decided to examine 10 individuals from 10 populations in 10 geographical regions, a total of 1,000 genomes plus the original genome as a reference. Our colleagues working with human genomes had just started the 1,000 genomes project. And they had a sabbatical visitor, Jim Carrington, who said to me, well, you know, no matter what you do, you always have to be 0.1% better than the competition. Thus, 1001, a name that stuck, and also indicated the future focus of his research. They are generally uh, two rather different uh, ways to approach uh, science uh, as a scientist. And I firmly believe you need both these types. So one type is the one who's really obsessed about one thing and wants to know everything there is to know about this one thing. Detlef Feigl belongs to a quite different species. This type, which I uh, like to think of as a scientific uh, butterfly, is a type that particularly uh, leads to cross-fertilization uh, between fields because you move from one field uh, to another and then bring ideas from one field uh, to, to the next. Detlef Weigel is one of those extraordinary scientists that not only works in a narrow field, but he expands into wide areas. He is also a very creative, enthusiastic, and concerned scientist. In 2011, inspired by the emerging global warming crisis, he decided to study how plants would react to climate change. About five years ago, a PhD student, Moy Exposito Alonso, came to the lab and set up an extremely ambitious experiment. He took uh, hundreds of strains that we had collected from all over the world where we had the entire um, genomes and then we simulated um, the rainfall of Tübingen and Madrid. One of the uh, most important discoveries um, there was that it's rare to find genes that are helpful in both conditions. In the Mediterranean, it's already not so rare that you have, have drought, and so they should be able to uh, adapt relatively quickly, whereas in, in Central Europe, that is not really quite the, um, the case. Detlef Weigel also works at identifying novel genetic factors that would enable crop improvement and resistance to disease. In short, Professor Weigel is a true giant of plant science and biotechnology. Of course, our goal should be A, limit the amount of CO2 that we put in the air, but we also know that things are complicated, that things might uh, take time, and we need to have a few other uh, aces up our sleeve to deal with climate change. The latest report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change specifically mentioned genome editing as a valuable tool to help plants to adapt faster. If I put myself into shoes of um, a, a consumer who is faced with the choice of here's a tomato and here is another tomato, but this tomato has an extra gene. It's natural that you know the conservative approach is why should I take the tomato with that extra gene? But the tomato that has not been genome edited to be more sustainable comes at a cost. The more land we use for agriculture, the less land there is for trees, for example, to grow. And you know, trees is still one of the best methods that we have to remove CO2 um, uh, from the air. It's a method that we know really, really works. Um, so, so it would be absolutely shameful if we did not use these uh, um, modern tools for biotechnology.